Welcome. I've done a number of videos on my FL Sun Q5 3D printer, and I'll put a link in the description to my playlist on that. I'll also put a link in the description to the hardware I'm using, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video, I'm going to be creating a basic model in Tinkercad. So I have a shape here, and I have this open in Affinity Designer, and this shape is half of a face mask. So what I want to do with this shape is print it out in 3D about 1 8 inch thick, and then it can be pressed against a piece of fabric, and then you can take a rotary razor around it to cut the edges off. And for a mask, you would do this twice, and then it would be sewn in the middle, which would be the top edge here. So I've drawn this up in Affinity Designer, which is similar to Adobe Illustrator. If you're looking for some software similar to Adobe Illustrator, I would check out Affinity Designer. It's around $50. It runs on Mac or PC. I think right now it's actually half off. They do run sales every once in a while, but you can find them on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and such. If you don't have a specific requirement for Adobe Illustrator, I find this to be a nice replacement because you pay $50 once and you're done. You don't have to pay every month. And I also have Affinity Photo, so I use both of these to create thumbnails and such. So I've drawn it up in here and the dimensions are all correct, but I need to transfer that over to Tinkercad. So I'll enlarge this a little bit. I'll just make this full screen actually. So this isn't a full tutorial on Tinkercad or Affinity Designer, but I'm going to try to mention everything that I can think to mention. So I'm holding down the space bar while dragging, and that brings up the hand, and now I'll use my magnify tool on the left to make this bigger. There we go. So I need to find the dimension of this shape. So I'll get the square tool, and it's kind of hard to drag it to where it gets on the edge. So I'll start this. I'll actually drag it bigger than the shape. Okay. Then I'll take the shape, and I have snapping turned on. So if you go in the menu and type in snapping in the help, you can bring up the snapping manager and you can turn snapping on. It says enable snapping. So now I'll take the inner shape and I'll just drag it to the edge of the square. So now it's touching that. I can click on the square now and drag it in till it's touching the other side. So if we look down here in the very bottom right, the width here says it's 6.26 inches and the height is 5.5. So I think that's supposed to be 6.25, something must got mixed up a little bit. And I'll be using 6.25 in my dimensions in Tinkercad. So now I need to find the dimensions of these, what look like triangles inside this square now. So I'll just take another square. I'll start it over here. Now it's hard to start a square on a square or on a rectangle, I should say rectangle. So I'll just start it over here. Actually, I want one up top too, so I'll just draw one. I'll take my pointer tool on the left and I'll drag this till it snaps to the bottom. Now I'll drag in from the left until it snaps on that bottom of the triangle. Now I'll drag up until it snaps to the right. So now we have the dimensions of this triangle. So I just want the bottom and the right side here. So the bottom is 1.5 and the right is 4.75. So I'll do the same thing with the top. I'll drag it down. Okay, I have the bottom snapped. I'll get the left side. I'm having trouble getting that to snap right there. It should snap on that point. Let me drag that off of here. I'm not real sure why that's not snapping right there. I don't know what that already is. Let me move that layer up higher. Let's try that. So on the right here in the layers menu, I just dragged curve. Curve is the shape, the, uh, is it a hexagon? I guess it has six sides. I moved it to the top. So let's see if I can get that to snap now. It is not snapping. I got this to work earlier. I don't know why it's not working now. So, well, I'll drag it close. So actually I got it right on there. It's not snapping though, I don't think. So the dimensions we have here is 0.75 and 1.75. Okay, so I have all the dimensions I need. I actually printed this out and wrote down the dimensions on a piece of paper so I can access them more quickly. So next we'll get into Tinkercad. So Tinkercad runs in a web browser. So you can just go to www.tinkercad.com and then you can sign in. So if you hit join now, let's see what that says. So there are some educational options, and then it says on your own, create a personal account, and you can sign in with email, Google, or Apple. Looks like there's other options, or Microsoft or Facebook. So if you have an account with one of those companies, you can sign in there. I actually created an account with Tinkercad, which is actually Autodesk. 
So this is the same company that makes Fusion 360, which some people may know about. So I'll click on sign in down here. So I'll sign in with my email address and I'm going to cut to the area after the sign in. Okay, here we go. So I've already created one of these, but I'm going to create it again. I'll hit create new design. And I did a video recently where I actually ran this on a Raspberry Pi computer. So you don't need a tremendously powerful computer. I have a kid that runs this on a Chromebook. This is a six year old Mac now, I think. You could use this on Mac PC. You just want a relatively decent browser, so modern and up to date. So I can draw this out similar to how I was drawing it out in Affinity Designer. On the right side here, I have shapes. First thing I want to do is actually go to the bottom right here where it says Edit Grid, and I'm going to change this to inches because that's what I'm used to. Okay, so we want to draw a square on here. So if we look at the different options here, the closest thing we have is a box. So I'll drag that on here and I want to enter dimensions in. So in order to do that, we'll go up here above all the shapes where it says ruler and we'll drag that down. And I'll line that up right with the bottom left corner. Okay, so to move around this workplace here, I'm using my mouse and I have a three button mouse connected up to my computer. So if I right click and I'm holding down, I can change the angle. With the scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out. If I click on the scroll wheel, I can move this. So I think those are all of the things you need to move. So right click is for rotating. Scroll wheel scrolls in and out. Clicking on the scroll wheel allows me to move it. And there might be other hotkeys and stuff you can do like holding down shift or something. I'm not sure of those, but you can experiment with that if you don't have a three button mouse. If you're going to be using this a lot, I would highly recommend you get a three button mouse. They're pretty cheap. You can get a USB one or you can get a wireless one. So now I want to create this with the dimensions of the rectangle I created in Affinity Designer. So at the bottom here, I'm going to type in 6.25. I'll hit enter. On the other side here, where it says one, I'll put in 5.5. I'll hit enter. And now for the height, that'll be over to the right. So I'm going to press down the middle scroll wheel. I'll drag this over till I can get over there. And here I want to put in one eighth of an inch. So it would seem like you might be able to do that. One eighth inch. That doesn't work. If you do one divided by eight, also doesn't work. So you need to enter decimals in here. So an eighth of an inch is 0.125. I'll hit enter. So if you're not good with fractions and decimals and you're using inches, you might want to create a little conversion chart or print out a conversion chart. A lot of times you'll want to go by eighths of an inch. So you could do one eighths inch, quarter inch, three eighths inch, half inch, five eighths inch, three quarter inch, seven eighths inch, and one inch. Or if you're doing sixteenths of an inch, do a decimal chart for that. That might save you some time. Okay, so I'm going to pull this whole thing on the grid here. You can see that the ruler did not move with it, so I will put the ruler back down although I may be moving it again. So you can grab that little circle down there, if I can get over there. You can grab this little circle to move the ruler or you can just drag a new one down, it will reposition it. And then on the left here, where we see top front, so we can click that for different views. So I'm in the upper left, that little icon. Let me scroll out a little bit. So if I click on the corner, it will show this type of view. I think you can click on the tip corner, or you can drag this. So that's another way to position your viewport. So now to get those angles, what we're going to do is we're going to create some triangles and then we're going to cut them out of this shape. So if we look over at the shapes on the right, we have a couple different shapes here that we could use maybe like roof. We have wedge. I'll probably use wedge, so I'll drag that over here. And we want that to be in a different orientation. So you can see these little curves here. So if I click on these, I can drag. Let me undo that. So I'm going to hit Command Z or on a Windows you do control C. So if I drag that, you can see the degrees change. So I want this to be, let's see, I actually want to go the other direction. Oops, I lost it, let's try that again. Okay, so I want this to be constrained to certain degrees, so I can hold down shift, and that will constrain it to 45 degrees. So I want to hit 90 right there. So I'll let go, I'm going to reposition my 
mouse, so I'm looking down on it a little more. A lot of drawing in 3D is learning how to manipulate your view space. So it just takes practice, and I'm not perfect at it. And then you could get good at one program and go into another, and it may work just a little bit different. So I want to measure this out, so I'll take this ruler and drag it right on the end of this part, like so. Okay, and now I'll enter my dimensions in that I measured earlier. So I have 1.5, the height is 1.25, or should I say the depth, I don't know, it's all how you're looking at it, and then we'll do 5.5 .5 here, okay? So if I drag this up to the corner here, that did not come out right. And there's a reason I have this wrong. This is not 5.5, this is 4.75. There we go. So I'll drag that to the corner. So what we have now are two solid shapes sitting on top of each other. What we want to do is we want to remove this triangle. So I'll hit hole here, okay? And that created a hole. Now you can't see it right now, what you need to do is select both of these. So I'll just drag both, and you can see where it says Shapes 2. That means I have both selected. And then right above that, you can see here there's this Group option. So I'll click on that, and it will remove that corner. Now if you have complex shapes, this can take a while. So sometimes you need to be patient. And I've had times where it doesn't work right, and I'm not sure why. Maybe something's not positioned perfectly. And you have to tinker around with it. It's called Tinkercad, so I guess that's appropriate. But I'm going to undo that. And I want to take this piece here and I want to copy it and paste it. So I'm just going to use Command C, Command V. I'll drag this to the other side. I'm going to look at it from this view. And now I want to rotate it 180 degrees. So I'll hold down my Shift key to constrain it. We're at 180 degrees. Okay. Now I'll drag that in until it lines up with the edge. Okay. That's looking good. Now, since the one on the right was a hole, the one on the left is also a hole. So I can select all of these pieces. It says I have shapes three selected, and I'll hit the group, and it will remove both sides. So now we need to lop off the top right. We're going to use the same technique here. I'll just flip this whole thing around. I'll bring a wedge over here. I'll rotate it. Okay, I'm rotating the wrong way. You know, you're not hurting anything, you can always undo. Hold on shift to constrain. I need to rotate it the other way now. Okay, so that's in the right orientation. First thing I'm going to do is I'll make this 1 8 inch, so I'll say 0.125. Now I'll drag the ruler on the corner. Didn't quite get it. Hmm. Let's try that again. Oops. I'm still amazed that this runs in a web browser. Back when I was using computers, I don't know, 25 years ago, you would need a workstation to do anything even close to this. So I have the ruler here now. I'll select the part and I'll put some dimensions in here. So I had 0.75 and the other dimension was 1.75. I'll click on hole to turn this into a hole. And you can do that before you position it. It doesn't really matter. I'll drag it on the main part. And if I zoom in on this corner, oops. If I zoom in on this corner, it should line up perfectly. So you can see right here on this corner. So same as before, I need to copy this and paste it. And I'll take it to the other side. Oops. I dragged the pink part. So if you're grabbing things you don't want to, you can hit this little lock icon here. There we go. But I'll need to unlock it before I cut the corners off. So again, I'll be rotating this around 180 degrees. Didn't quite do that right. Let's see. There we go. So now I'll unlock the red part. I'll select these three parts and I'll hit group. So there we go. Now we have our shape.
So now I want to export this for 3D printing. So I'll just select it here. I'll go up to export in the upper right. I'll choose STL. It will save out. That was pretty quick. More complex things could take more time. Now I'll go into Cura. I'll go to open files. So it gives it these weird names. It's terrific bamboo. I'll hit open. And here's our part. And I'm dragging around here with my three button mouse, just the same as I was in Tinkercad. So I'll use the scroll wheel to zoom. I can press down on the scroll wheel to move it around and I can right click to rotate. So I've selected the part. I've already gone through the settings on here with a previous print and I did 15% infill on it and I made the walls uh, four times size. Let's see, walls. Here we go. The wall line count I set to four. So that makes the edges a little thicker. I also had one other setting in here. I think that's not normal. I think I said infill before, I turned off infill before walls, I think is what it was. Yes. So infill before walls is turned off. So I can slice this up now. It says it's going to take three hours and 22 minutes to print. It's going to cost a dollar and two cents. So this is probably the largest print I've ever printed on my printer, as far as the build plate goes to the side. I may have built up more, maybe ones that use more filament, but this is probably the one that took up the largest amount of the build plate. So I'll save this to a file. I'll go back into my web browser and I'll open up Octopi. I'm using that, and I have a video on my playlist on Octopi. You can find that in the description. I really like using Octopi to interface with my 3D printer because I can monitor it and do time lapse and such. So I'll go down here to Upload, go to Downloads, I'll hit Choose for Upload, and now it's on the Octopi ready to go. So I'm going to cut the video. I need to prep my printer and turn it on. Like if I hit Connect here, it's not going to connect up. I need to turn it on, get the filament loaded, and then I'll go over starting the print. So for you, this will happen instantaneously. Okay, so I have the filament loaded. I do need to purge a little bit of the last filament I used out. So I'm going to hit connect. So the first thing I'll do is I'll heat the bed. I'll hit 60 here and I'll hit the check mark and then I'll heat the tool. So I'll type 200 here and hit the check mark. I did the bed first because it takes longer, although we're talking seconds, so it's not a big deal which one you do first. So those are both heating up now. If I go over to control, I position my camera to get the whole plate because this will take up most of the plate. And if I go to time lapse, I have the time lapse turned on for timed. So once this gets heated up, I'll press the filament through. I'll pull the extruder back and I'll press the filament through by hand to purge out the last color. I do have skirt turned on in Cura and that will print a single line of filament around the perimeter of our actual print and that will purge out more of the previous filament. It'll prime everything so it's ready to go too. So the way this will print is it will print the four outer walls and then it will do the infill or the inside. And it doesn't actually do much infill because this is so thin and I have the walls so thick. So there's only a few layers of infill in it. I could probably do thinner walls, but I don't know. So I'm doing a clear PLA and I'll put a link in the description to it also. So after I push that out by hand, I use a paper towel to kind of wipe it off. So the nozzle is clean, still waiting for the bed to come up to temp. And I guess you can't see it on here, I'll go to temperature. I'm looking at the device itself. So we can see the bed is at 52C. Okay, that doesn't seem to be updated because now the device says it's at 60. So it looks like I'm ready to print. Okay, so if all goes well, I'll stitch in a time lapse of this print happening and then we'll take a look at it when it's done. Okay, the print is finished. So here it is. I printed this out of the translucent PLA because I have quite a bit of it. And I printed a smaller one of these in black and I wanted them to be different colors so you could easily tell them apart. So this is the printout I did from Affinity Designer. And if I set this on here, it lines up quite well. So I don't know if it's perfect or not. Let's see if I line that edge up. I mean, that's pretty good. There's a little black showing here. I mean, I don't know how much better you could expect that to be. So here's the flex out of it. It's pretty stiff. So the idea is that this will get set down on fabric and you hold down on it and then take a roller cutter and cut along the sides to cut out the fabric. So this is something we're trying. I don't know how well this is gonna hold up. You know, it might get cuts in a lot. So one thing I noticed on the previous one is there's a little lip here 
where the bottom layer was kind of smushed a little bit too much maybe. So I took a file and filed that down on the other one. I'll do the same here and then I took a little sandpaper to smooth that out. So you can see this is translucent, but it's uh, you know not like a window. So I'll use my calipers here. Okay, so I think I've set these to 0.125. These are hard to read. I should get out my digital calipers, but these were handy. So you can see there's a little bit of play here. And I did adjust my Z height. I lowered it a little bit. I could probably raise it back up. I'm still playing with that sometimes. But you can see there's a little bit of play, but it's pretty close to an eighth of an inch. So that's how we took a drawing and we modeled it up in Tinkercad. We exported it out, we sliced it, and then we 3D printed it. And now we have a part from that. So I know this isn't complicated, but if you're wanting to get into 3D printing, and even if you don't have a printer, you can download Tinkercad. Well, you don't download it, you just go to the website. You can open up Tinkercad and play around with it and learn how to model things before you even get a printer. That way, when you do get a printer, you can hit the ground running. But I'm not an expert at Tinkercad. I'm still learning it myself. My grade schooler is probably knows as much as I do, maybe more, I don't know. But if you do have any questions, drop a comment below and I will try to answer it or maybe someone else will answer it for you. And if I don't know the answer, maybe I'll research it and try and figure it out myself because when people ask me questions, oftentimes I'll help them, but a lot of times I'll learn new things myself. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.